So y'all come on in and get a seat, stand up. Actually, stand up before you get a seat. Just sing.
Good morning, church. Been traveling? Let's catch you up. It's Sunday, June 18th, and here are your announcements for the week. Guests, we're so thankful that you're here with us today and would love to answer any questions you might have about our church. Before you leave today, be sure to fill out a connection card found in the seat back in front of you. This card helps us to know how we can serve you best right now. Are you wanting to know more about faith in Jesus, or is there a way we could be praying for you or your family? There's a space for both of those things and more. Later in the service, simply place it in the offering plate and we'll take care of the rest. This summer, we want to challenge every member to attend our two financial stewardship classes. Our first class is happening Saturday, June 24th from 9 to 12, and we're going to focus on a stewardship mindset, asking, how should we approach our finances as believers? Child care is provided and the cost is $8, which covers the book and materials. You can register now on the Hope, but don't delay. We wanna be sure we have time to get books and materials for the attendees ready. Next Sunday, June 25th, it's time for family celebration. These are held periodically throughout the year to bring us together as a church to celebrate and recognize all the Lord is doing at Living Hope. We get the opportunity to meet new members, hear from our elders about various church business, and have a time to see old friends and meet new ones. During this gathering, we're gonna focus on a night of worship, as well as vote on our updated church structure document and constitution and bylaws, and vote on extending Howard's term as an elder. Take it a step further and invite others to join you for dinner at your home or out to eat afterwards. Adult Volleyball is now meeting on Tuesdays from 7 to 9 p.m. Whether you're a pro or just getting started, we would love for you to come join us. And don't just stop at you. Bring a friend, a neighbor, or a coworker for a fun, competitive evening. Kids are welcome to be present, but may not participate. If you have any questions, reach out to the church office and we'll get you in contact with the coordinators. For a full list of what's happening, check out The Hope, our news and events page. You can get to The Hope three ways. First, by scanning the QR code on the front of the weekly worship guide. Two, Get connected on the Church Center app and find a link at the top of the home screen. Or three, visit us at lhpc.net slash the hope. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you guys. Um, Alan just got back from Guatemala, so I'm going to be here today. And uh, we'll hear more about that in just a minute. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. But one person. <laughs> That's great. But uh, just like we always do, we want to sp- start off with a time of prayer. Um, and to me, because of the day, it seems most obvious that we're going to talk uh, to God about fathers in our lives. And so would y'all go to the Lord with me in prayer? <sighs> Father, thank you for today. Not because it's Father's Day, but just that it's one more day that we could be together here worshiping you, talking to you. The fact that you allow us to speak to you when we were who we were is an amazing thing, and it just speaks to your goodness and your grace. It speaks to the good Father that you are. Lord, there is no one like you. We thank you that we can come to you in confidence, knowing that you always hear us, knowing that that we don't have to be afraid to speak our minds to you, that you give right answers, that what you give is good, that the way that you answer prayer is good. And so today, God, we want to come and, and say thank you not only for all that you've done, but, but for the men that you have put in our lives. Lord God, we thank you for our daddies, for the men that, that you, you gave us to as, as an inheritance, as a, uh, something that they held for you, God. And we thank you for the examples that they were, God. And I, I recognize that while I say that, that not every father belongs to you, not every father leads his children the, to you the way that he should, but God, I, I recognize that you say in your word we are to honor our fathers and our mothers, God. And so even if it's just that they brought us into the world, we say thank you. God, thank you for our dads. God, when I say that, I think about for just a minute, I think about how uh, I was just talking to one of my brothers, God, who lost his dad this year. There's men that ache to speak to their daddies again. There's women that ache to speak to their fathers and reconcile and fix things and say things that were never, you know, said, Lord. God, would you give us peace today? God, we can't go fix things that are gone. But what we can do is rest in you that your plan is good and that you're with us. So comfort those that are in pain today. God, comfort those daddies who have lost. 
come from them, God, that have lost their children. They're still their daddy, but God, there's an emptiness there that only you can fill. God, would you love on them? Would you remind them that you're good? God, I thank you so much for the spiritual fathers that you've put in our lives. Men who come along and, and stand beside us and coach us and train us. And God, thank you for the men that sometimes give us spankings when we need them, that, that, that let us have it when we're way out of line, God. What a gift it is to be involved with other believers who love you from different generations, who care for us as if they were our dads. We love you so much, Lord. And we know that because it's, it's only because you love us that we get to do that. You teach us to love. You teach us to grow. So I pray for the fathers in this room, Lord, that we would become better examples of you, that you would protect us and you would help us and you would grow us. And I thank you that I know you'll never give up on us, but help us be better than we are, God. God, I love you and I thank you for this day. Teach us to be better dads. Thank you for the children that you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to spend some more time in worship, so y'all stand, please. All right. If you've been to Living Hope before, you know we like to sing. We like to lift our voices. We like to clap. Celebrating and reverencing God. We're going to sing, there's a song in my soul.
are holy. You are not like us, and we thank you for that, God. God, we come to you today knowing we need to hear from you. And so, God, I pray that all of us, myself included, would have a heart to hear, to receive ears, to hear, a mind to understand, God, so that you can speak to us and and change us as we go out into the world. Amen. You can be seated. Thanks, guys. Children, you can come. I got an artifact here. Yeah, it's an artifact. You see what it is? Yeah. You guys have no idea what this is. Do you know what, what? The, you know what this is? What is this? Uh, it's some like thingy like for a car. Like, it's it's like a, a, a thingy for a car. But yeah, like you like I'm pretty sure it's like like how you like kind of like the stuff like like a part of the car. Like that's how I feel about it. I feel like that's some like like part of the Oh, like how to car. fix the car? Yeah, like it's a good idea. Do you know what this is? Anybody? My you do? What is it? My it's a map. It is a map. It's a map. It's a map. It's this is a. No, this this one is actually <laughs> from Chicago, and I'm sure it's no, different because no. this. Hold on, hold on. Listen, I'm gonna tell you about it. Listen, I'm gonna tell you about it. Check this out. This was how we used to get places. Somebody would sit on the right side of the car and hold this up and fold it, and they would draw on it, and you would print out stuff from the computer that were maps, map quest. Anybody remember that? That was a gone, bygone era, right? Here, you know what else, too? What was funny is, is you would think that the person sitting in the driver's seat was the most important in the car, and they're really not. The person holding the map, because they're the ones that go, turn right, turn right, turn right here, and they meant left. But... But, uh, you know, what's funny is it does seem like the person steering the car matters, but if the person holding the map doesn't do right, you're not going to get where you're supposed to go, right? And Michelle always used to hold the map and read it for me. Hold on. Michelle would hold the map and read it for me, and, and most of the time we got where we were trying to go because I have a pretty good co-pilot in her. But you know, but you know what? But, yeah, a couple, t- a couple times it was a couple hours more. That's true. But, but you know what? I wonder, thank that, thank you. That was important, clearly. But I'm wondering who is holding the road map of your life? Who is the one that's saying, you need to turn left here, you need to go right, you need to keep doing what you're doing? It should be God, shouldn't it? Yeah. You know how come? Why should he be the one that tells you that? He's the one who made you. He's the one who knows, right? He doesn't have to look at a map to figure out where you should go and what you should do. He is the map for where you, where you should go and what you should do. And so if we can let him be the one that says, hey, do this, say hi to them, do that, okay? That's what we're going to pray for today. That's what we're going to pray as adults in here is that we'd allow God to be the one that holds the map of our life. Let's pray. Lord God, we love you. We thank you for who you are and what you've done. And we pray that every one of us in this room right now would allow you to be the one that tells us what to do. In Jesus' name, amen. I also know I'm never going to get this folded back right. Wait, wait, it could happen. You might be witnessing a miracle here, everybody. 
Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. That worked better than I thought. Everybody, y'all had one in your glove box, right? Just crumpled up pretty much. Just edges all worn out from folding it over. We drew all over them. It didn't always work. It did not always work. Like I said, uh, good morning. I'm Howard. I'm the student pastor here. Alan just got back from Guatemala. Um, and he'll be back next week. Um, I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but I do want to kind of, well, let, let, me, let me give you a part of it first. Today we're going to be looking at uh, uh, another part of Acts, um, ending Paul's secondary, second missionary journey. And next week, Alan is going to be back in the pulpit. And, um, we're going to be taking a short break from Acts uh, through July. And when we get back to in August, we'll pick up back in Acts. But um, last week, Jacob did a great job. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But before you do, you may be able to tell my voice is not great today. Can you tell? <coughs> that wasn't for show. That was real. But um, it was funny to me. Uh, I didn't intend to talk to you all about this because I was just going to suffer with it. When I got in this morning, I was like, oh, I'm kind of discombobulated because I know I hear myself in my head and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, Chad Gardner came up to me and he goes, man, you doing okay? I said, man, I'm just, I'm kind of feel like I'm off a little bit because I, I hear myself talking in my head and, and that gets distracting when you're up here. And we were talking, but he goes, yeah, I can understand how that does that. You know, he talks a lot to people. And I said, you know, but what's funny is y'all don't need to hear my voice today. You don't. That's literally what I'm talking about in the, today's sermon is I'm saying you don't need to hear from anybody but God. So my voice being jacked up is probably a blessing to me. It's probably a blessing because it's reminding me that, that what I have to say doesn't matter unless it comes from God. Okay, guys, I have no power to help you on my own. You need Jesus to help you, and that's what we're going to learn today. We're going to talk about this. I'm going to tell you, here's exactly what I'm going to teach you today. I believe it's from God's Word. It, it's this. You need to stop listening to people that hate you and hate the gospel. And you need to stop listening to people that love you and love the gospel. You need to listen to Jesus. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to run your life. And we'll talk about it in a minute. I'm not saying don't listen to good counsel or something like that. But what I'm saying is, if there's a voice that is going to guide your life, it does not need to be me. It does not need to be Alan or the elders. It does not need to be other people in church. It needs to be the Holy Spirit. Now, we're going to talk about how he talks through people at times, because he does a lot. But ultimately, that's what I want you to walk away with today. The Holy Spirit is your guide. God's holding the roadmap. Let him, matter of fact, let him drive too. Okay, just, just be there. Go along for it. Um, but last week, Jacob uh, did a great job. I feel like challenging us kind of to be uh, 100% with God, with the gospel, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, if we're, you know, if we're making tents or if we're, you know, in lay ministry, you know, just, uh, you know, whatever you're doing as a profession, it doesn't matter. Be who God wants you to be. Be there knowing that God intends to use you for the kingdom, right? And today we're going to hear a lot of the same thing. As Paul finishes his time out in Corinth, he travels to Syria to continue his life's mission, which is to share the gospel. But, but it's funny to me, a lot of times, I don't know if y'all do this, but sometimes I read stories about Paul, super Christian Paul, right? Right? No. Normal Christian Paul. That, that he, he does, the, the calling on his life is the same calling on everybody's life. Now, you may not have the call of an evangelist. You may not have the call to be a preacher, but you have a call on your life that says, I'm a believer in God. It is my job to share him with other people. It is my job to go out there and share the gospel and make disciples and be a part of whatever it is that God is doing. And we have to learn how to hear that. Otherwise, we're going to miss him along the way. I don't know about you, but sometimes I struggle going, is this from God or from me? So let's talk about that some. Paul says... Um, <clears throat> He's got people, though, that he's dealing with throughout this story today, and, and it's just like I said a minute ago, it's people that hate him and hate the gospel. He's got some people here that love him and love the gospel, and each one of these groups, in one way or another, wants to tell Paul what he ought to do right now, and Paul does what he should do. He doesn't listen to them. He listens to God and goes, this is what God's doing. This is what I'm doing. So let me read to us, okay? Oh, let me, let me tell you. Last week, we ended kind of with this. And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, Do not be afraid, but go on speaking and don't be silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to harm you, for I have many in this city who are my people. And he stayed a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. And so this is just a, as a reminder just where we left Paul last week. Um, he had fallen into some fear or doubts, maybe some depression, and God graciously reminding, I, I've got this. I've got this covered. You can just trust me, keep doing what I told you to do. And he stays another 18 months because God has many in this city who are my people. 
Jacob and I were talking about it. I thought it was so sweet to understand some of the reason that he had to stay there longer was because some of these people that belonged to him hadn't come to him yet, right? I love that because what it reminds me of is the job's done. The work is finished. He's, he's already done it. If you're his, he did that a long time ago. He didn't have to do it when you got saved. He did the work back then, right? The moment he purposed to do it, it was done because God finishes everything he starts, right? So that was great comfort and a reminder to me. Um, so Paul's in this sweet season. He, everything's going well. He's sowing, he's reaping, and some things change. And so we'll get to today's text. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him before the tribunal, saying, this man is persuading people to worship God contrary to the law. But when Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, if this were a matter of wrongdoing or vicious crime, O Jews, I would have reason to accept your complaint. But since this is a matter of questions about words and names and your own law, see to it yourself. I refuse to be a judge of these things. And he drove them from the tribunal. And they all seized Sosthenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But Gallio paid no attention to any of this. After this, Paul stayed many more days longer, and they took leave of the brothers and set sail for Syria. And with him, Priscilla and Aquila, Aquila, I'll get that right, at Centuria, at Centuria he had cut his hair, for he was under a vow. And they came to Ephesus, and he left them there, but he, stayed, but he himself went to the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. And when they asked him to stay for a longer period, he declined. But on taking leave of them, he said, I will return to you if God wills. And he set sail from Ephesus. When he had landed at Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church and then went down to Antioch. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that what you give us is good. It's designed to teach us and grow us and make us wise for following you. All of it is breathed out by you. So when we read it, Lord, and when we try to understand it today, we want your Holy Spirit to guide us. Please. Amen. So, at some time during Paul's stay in Corinth, a new proconsul was appointed. I don't even know if I'm sure if I'm saying that right, but I don't know if you're like me. When I read that, I went, I don't know what a proconsul is, right? So, I looked it up, because you can do that now. I looked it up, and there were uh, two highest elected officials in Rome, and those were called consuls. And under them, they would appoint other people to, to judge and guide the regions. They were like a, like a civil governor, is the way that you would think about it. They didn't make military decisions. But when they spoke about laws or made judgments or rulings, they spoke with all the authority of Rome. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm sorry. So there's this new guy, Gallio, and the Jews led by Sosthenes, the new ruler of the synagogue, decide, let's try this guy out and see if we can get rid of Paul because he's causing all this trouble for us. So there's a new ruler that's here, Gallio, right? And there's a new ruler in the synagogue, Sosthenes. Now, you may wonder, like I did last week, I jotted it down. I said, what, what, what happened to Crispus? You know, the, the guy, what happened to him? Well, he became a believer, remember? I don't think they want him leading the synagogue anymore, right? So this new guy, Sosthenes, comes in. He's leading the synagogue. And they make a, a united attack on Paul. They rose up against Paul with hostile intent. If we were in the King James Version, this is where we would make the uh, Honda Accord joke, Right? Somebody's, it's the one that gets said always during this because they came in one accord. So it couldn't have been that many of them. But you have to, it's obligatory. You have to say that joke here. It's, it's somewhere in the law. But, um, but that's funny that I say law because right here it says they accuse him of persuading people to worship God contrary to the law. And my question is this, whose law? Right? Because the issue is, is if this was about God's law, but what God says, they shouldn't be taking it to any human judge. And when they asked him to stay for a longer period, he declined. But on taking leave of them, he said, I will return to you if God wills. And he set sail from Ephesus. And when he landed at Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church, and then he went down to Antioch. Can you imagine the relief Paul must have felt? He was in a place that wanted him gone. They wanted him out of there. They hated him. They hated his message. And now he's at a place, and they're like, we love you. We love what you're saying. Stay with us longer. Hang out with us. We want you to be here. The people in Corinth could not wait for him to be gone, some of them. And they made it known. And here, they beg him to stay. Man, that is scary. That is really scary. And it's dangerous. And I'll tell you why. 
it can be so deceptive to listen to voices that love you if they're telling you what to do. Because they ask him here, stay, stay, stay. He's on a mission with God. He's got something to do with God. And I, I don't know about you, but I, I've been in places where it felt like there is nobody around me that loves me. Nobody cares. Nobody, you know, I'm not saying it's a pity party. Don't misunderstand me. But I've felt that way, and I bet you have too. And when you get around people that are like, hey, come on in, kick your feet up, here's something to eat, here's something to drink, this is my spot. And it'd be really easy to stay there, not follow God, assume that because I feel good now, this must be his will. Because I'm comfortable, because people here love me. Man, I'm doing so good because I've got the message out there and everybody's nodding. So what? So what? If God's not in it, it doesn't matter what we agree about, right? If we're all like, man, everybody, we love each other, but we're not out there sharing the gospel, we're not making disciples, we're not loving on people, this is pointless, right? It doesn't matter. If all we're doing is patting ourselves on the back because we feel good because we're hanging around with people that love us, the Bible says what Jesus said. What are you doing more than other people? You love only your brothers? So what? Pagans do that. We've got to learn to listen to him. And Paul does what's courageous. Earlier, I've got a reason for everything I do. You remember that DC talk, one about song that says that? It says, I'm, I'm the king of excuses. I have one for every selfish thing I do. All of us are that way if we're not careful. And that voice that we say, man, it speaks louder than all the rest of them. But ultimately, not the other voices, not the people that love me, not the people that hate me, not my own voice needs to be the voice that's speaking to me and guiding me. Paul, I'm sure, would have loved to stay with him. He even kind of hints at that, right? I mean, if God allows it, I'm coming back here. But if God allows it, I remember on my very first, uh, mission, on my very first uh, missionary trip I went on, I went with uh, some people from here and some people from uh, First Baptist uh, College Station. And uh, they're the ones who planted us. And we went on a trip to Honduras, and we were there building houses and sharing the gospel. And I remember I was working with a, a really great guy. His name was Elbin. This is like, oh, 20, yeah, this is like 20-something years ago. Don't want to talk about it. She's at 14. And then 14 is 24 years ago. I remember this guy, though. He was a fantastic guy, a little guy. Worked like, a, man, he was a beast working. We worked all day. First day work ends. I'm dragging. He's, you know, he's still good to go. And I'm like, hey, man, I'll see you tomorrow. And he turns and looks at me funny and goes, See, si Dios le permite, which means if, if God allows it, man, what an amazing thing. He goes, I'll see you tomorrow if that's what God is in. I'll, I'll be here with you if God allows me to wake up, he allows you to wake up, he brings us back to here, he doesn't have something else planned. You know, guys, it's so funny to me that, that we don't think that way when the Bible commands us to think that way. In James, it talks about it. It says, it says that we boast in our arrogance. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And it says, as it is, you boast in your arrogance, and all such boasting is evil. Instead, you want to say, if the Lord wills it, we will live and do this or that. If God allows it, I'm going to do this. But we make promises we have no ability to keep. I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe not. You don't know that. But, but we were so presumptuous. You know, we saw a very stark example of this on that same mission trip. About the third day, I think, I looked around and one of the young men that worked with us wasn't there. And I went, hey, where's, I don't, I don't remember his name, uh, where's this guy at? And he goes, oh, he can't be here today. I said, really, is everything okay? He goes, no, his sister died. Like that. No, his sister died. They had to bury her today. He'll be back tomorrow. Sometimes in the comfort of the country that we live in, it, it takes, uh, we're surprised when something like that happens. But in a country where life isn't as sure as it is here, they don't take God like as, they're not presumptuous on him. They don't look like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be allowed tomorrow. There's, there's a chance that somebody in this room will not be here tomorrow. And we're presumptuous about it. We don't make sure that we've told them what they need to know. We don't, we don't look at them and go, hey, man, you need the gospel. You need Jesus Christ. And I, well, this might be the only time I ever interact with you. We walk into stores. People are behind the counter. You have no idea what's going on in their life. Like my brother Bill always says, everybody's got a story. You don't know why that person's mad, but we act like a Karen instead of loving on them, right? We don't know how long we've got or they've got. We ought to be using whatever minutes we have to fulfill the gospel by sharing it with other people. So that's all free. But ultimately, 
it's, it's amazing to me that I don't think of me boasting about my life as evil. That me sitting in the driver's seat, me holding the map, isn't something that, that is abhorrent to me. That I'm not looking at it going, this is wrong. It should be him and him alone that decides for me what to do. And guys, I don't think I'm the only one. I don't. So we've got to stop listening to people who hate us and hate the gospel. We've got to stop listening to people who love us and love the gospel. We've got to listen to God. He knows what's best. He knows what's true. I wonder what it would look like if, if we just started listening to God and said, whatever you want is whatever you get. Can you imagine? Guys, I'm not the only one that knows we're not doing this. Am I? You know you're not doing this every day, every moment, every thought, every decision is not in God's hand. I've still got way too much control. At some point, and I hope it's before I die, I go, here, be the actual king of my life entirely. What a difference would we make in the world if we did that? How would things change in our families, in our homes, in our jobs, in our nation? We do a ton of complaining about our country, and there's tons to complain about. Do not misunderstand me. But the problem is not out there. The problem is in here. The problem is in you. It is in me. And I need to let God show me what's wrong with me. And I need to let him take care of it because he's the only one that can. Then I can see your sin better. The Bible says take the plank out of my own eye, right? Then I can see the the speck in yours. The problem's with us. Especially the believers. The lost have no ability to change or be different than they are because they don't have the power of the Holy Spirit inside them. Why are we complaining about them all the time? Did Jesus walk around and complain about sinners? Who was he hard on? The church. The people that said they loved him. Why do we do it? Why do we complain so much about them instead of fighting each other in a way that is loving? You know, some of the greatest things that's happened in my life are hope groups and D groups. My hope groups have, the times that I've been in hope groups with people, man, we've had an amazing time and it's been life changing. My D group, I would honestly say, impacts me more because it's people that know me intimately and very, very well. And we love each other and we encourage each other. And sometimes we let each other have it. We call each other out and we say, man, you're being a hypocrite. Cut it out. You know, because that, that's what we're talking about here. If we're going to practice, I know how to hear your voice. You know how to hear my voice. But it's hard to hear from God sometimes, isn't it? Because those voices are there, their voice, their voice, my voice. And it's like, man, I'm not even sure what God wants me to do. And I know this, I know this. There's people in this room right now that it is almost impossible for you to hear from him. It's because you've never given him your life. He's not holding the roadmap, you are. You never said to him, hey, listen, you're God and I'm not. I want you to be my God. I'm going to give you my life. I'm going to turn from my sin and my way of doing things. And I'm going to give it to you. You need to control me. And if you haven't done that, it is very, very, very hard to hear from him. But I'm going to tell you this right now, and I mean this. If you're in that place, he's speaking to you right now. Okay? Because the gospel is his message to you. Turn to me in repentant faith. Turn away from your way of doing things, not so that life will get better, not so that your marriage will get fixed, not so that your finances will improve. Forget all that. Because you have offended a God who is rightfully angry with you. He is perfect and holy. We all just sang about it. We were clapping and stuff like that. But we act like he's like us and he's not. Our sin separated us from him and we had no way to get to him. And so he came here. He came here and he lived a perfect life and he gave that life on a cross and died for our sins. Three days later, he rose again victorious over sin and death. And anyone who turns to him and said, be my God, pay for my sins, the Bible says has eternal life. And the proof of that is what happens after. Because faith that can save you can change you. And if it doesn't, nothing happened. I walked down an aisle when I was probably 15 years old, 13 years old, I don't remember. I walked down an aisle, I stood with the pastor, and I said a bunch of words. Then if I'd have died, I'd have gone to hell. It is not about walking down an aisle. It is not about saying words. There's not a perfect sinner's prayer. There's nothing like that. All there is is you are God and I am not. I am at your mercy. I do not have a right to be with you. I should not be with you, but you said I can be, so I will. Guys, that's what it's about. There's not something else. You know, we have a a class that we give here every once in a while. If you are a believer, by the way, like I said, sometimes, I don't know about y'all, it's hard to discern, right? 
because I want what I want. I wanted to go to Guatemala so bad. I love going on missionary trips. I think it's fantastic. If you haven't gone on one, you should at some point. It'll change your life. God does not need you to go. He'll accomplish his will apart from you. But you can be the beneficiary of going and doing what God tells you to do, and you get to sit there and watch what Daddy does. Right? I wanted to go so bad, I told Alan, man, I'll go. They needed guys to go, and then a couple guys decide, okay, I'll follow God, and they go so I don't have to. <laughs> Clint. <laughs> but no, praise God, because I was going, you know, there's this part of me that was warned, going, I've got VBS the week before, I've got Mission Arlington the week after. I, I, I don't know, God, but I know you can do it if I can't, so I'll go if you want me to. I'll say yes to you. And he told me no. And it was good I didn't go. I didn't need to be there. He didn't need me there. He needed the guys that went to be there for them, for the people that they ministered to. And so it doesn't matter what I wanted. I wanted to go. I saw the bad things I wanted to go, and I heard from him, and it was right and good. And whatever he answers is correct, even if it's scary, even if it's hard, even if it's not what you want. So what? We all do things we don't want to do all the time. So just listen to God and follow him. But, but for me, like I said, it's hard sometimes to know. We do a class here every once in a while. It's called Experiencing God. Some of you all have taken it, yeah? Experiencing God. One person. But, um, so, yeah, okay, two, yeah. It, it is good. But it, it, has, it has some things that it's, <laughs> right, okay, <laughs> I can't speak yet. Um, so it, it teaches us a few things uh, about God and some things that we know can be, or that are true about him, that, things like he's always at work around us, right, and when he reveals it to us, it's an invitation for us to join him in it. But one of the things it does really well is it says this, God speaks by the Holy Spirit through the Bible, through prayer, through circumstances, and the church to reveal himself, his purpose, and his ways, right? It goes on to say that when, when he invites you to work, you're going to have a crisis of belief. You're going to be scared where you go, no, I'm not either. And that's actually a good indication that it might be from him, not from you, right? It's like, uh-uh, <laughs> not that, no. And that, but then you, you can overcome that with his help, and you can obey him, and you're going to know him better as you experience what he's doing, right? And you'll learn to hear his voice better. But, but we don't talk about that. We just tell people all the time, listen to God. And we're like, fine, how? I don't know what you mean. You know, I have never, to be super clear, I've never heard God, Howard. I, I, I'm not saying nobody's heard from him that way, but you come at me and say, I heard from God today. I'm going to be like, what do you mean? It better align with his word. I know that. He's not going to tell you something that he doesn't say in his word to do or not do. Right? So, but at any rate, at any rate, I, we didn't have a, I had a really neat example of it this, this past week when we had VBS, uh, which was amazing, by the way. We had a bunch of kids. It was really cool. Um, I was teaching with Katie Moody. You all know her. Um, she's a fantastic teacher. She does not get about half or three quarters of my jokes. So she's a, a great person for me to be telling jokes to in front of a lesson because there's this awkwardness. It's fantastic. Um, but we were getting ready. We'd been teaching about, uh, it was a pirate theme, so we were teaching about Jesus walking on water, uh, Jesus calming the storm, stuff like that, right? And the last one that we were going to teach was Jesus with the woman at the well right, where he, you know, t tells her her whole story, and she gets saved. It was going to be a really good lesson, and I was out. I had to take care of something. I was late for the first lesson coming in, and as I was outside, I was so, 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 like, disquieted. My spirit was not at ease about the lesson at all, and I went, man, I, I want to do the right thing. This is a Bible story. It's not a bad story. It's a great story, right, and I just kept getting this feeling. I'm, I'm, you need to share your testimony. You need to share your testimony. You need to share your testimony. I was like, fine. And I went in the class all awkward. Katie had already started the lesson. And I went, Katie, I'm, I'm sorry. Is it okay if we do a different thing, go a different way? And she goes, yes. And I, I couldn't understand at first why she was so adamant about it. But she was very excited. She was, yes. And I, I shared my testimony. Um, and it was, it was great. God moved in it. It was really cool. The kids were very, very attentive. And at first, you know, it's not necessarily hearing from God, right? It can be, but how am I sure? At the end of the lesson, Katie was just elated. And she goes, oh, Howard, 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 I got to tell you. She goes, did you notice how bad it was when I came in? I said, Katie, I, I really was having a hard time paying attention, but it did seem like it was a little clunky, and you were struggling to, to get stuff out. And she goes, that's because this morning when I was praying, I felt like I was telling somebody to share our testimonies today. So that's an example of God speaking through the church, right? He confirmed that with us. We know that we were doing the right thing because he told us independently of each other what we were supposed to be doing that way. So you have confidence in him, 
right? And the more you do that, the more you're going to start recognizing. You're going to see him in the day-to-day things in your life, showing you things. It's not coincidence that you're thinking about God. It's not, none, none of you, none of me seek him on our own, even now. I mean, that's a fact before you're a believer, but it's a fact after you're a believer too, that if there's anything that I'm doing that's good, that seeks him and is motivated towards him, it came from him first, Right? And so when you see those moments and those opportunities, seize them. Don't ignore them. When you see you're passing somebody on the street and you wouldn't normally turn around and go pick somebody up, if God tells you to do it, go do it. And I know some of you are thinking, well, that's not safe. No, it's not safe to not follow God. That's not safe. A few years ago, and I'm not bragging about us because God taught us this, we sent our oldest to China. And my wife would always say she is safer with him than she is with me. She's on the other side of the planet. We cannot get to her today if she has a problem. I can't go solve whatever it is. She doesn't need me. She needs him. She doesn't need to hear daddy's or mama's voice. She needs to hear God's voice. It's all that matters. Guys, I want to finish with this. I I just want to say this one more time. We've got to stop listening to other people's voices. And I'm going to tell you why. There is another judgment seat. And someday, you and I are going to stand in front of it. And it's not going to be Pilate. And it's not going to be Galileo. It's not going to be your friends. It's not going to be people that hate you that are sitting in judgment over you. It's going to be Jesus. And if you do not have him controlling your life, it is going to be a very bad day for you. And I don't say that to you Because I think I'm good. There's nothing that I have that is good that did not come from him. But if you have not put your faith in him, that day is coming. It's closer now. It's closer now. Turn to him today. How foolish would it be to sit under the gospel message and not respond to it? Well, that's a lie because you are responding if you say no. If you say not now, you're saying no. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow if God allows it. We'll be together next week if God allows it. Well, I won't be here. I'll be in Mission Arts team. If God allows it. Right? We've got to stop taking it for granted that we're going to be here, that they're going to be here. I'm just going to say this too. If you have something that you need to deal with, somebody else, deal with it now. I'm, I meant what I prayed. I wish there were things I could tell my daddy that he did a better job than I thought he did. I can't tell him now. Deal with the things you need to deal with. Deal with Jesus and deal with believers that you've heard or have hurt you. Let me pray. God, I pray that in this place right now we would hear a word from you, not from me. In the quiet, as we pray to you, as we talk to you, as we hear from you, God, I pray that you would speak. That you would show us what is going on in our lives. That you would show us what needs to change, what needs to be different, if there's something we need to do, if it's changed jobs, if it's moved cities. God, if it's to go to another church because that's where they're calling you, somebody. God, we want them to listen to you, not to us. Lord God, be God in this place, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have a, a time of invitation right now. I'll be down front if you need to talk to somebody, you want to pray with somebody, if there's something going on, the altar's always open. You can talk to him right in your seat too. There's nothing, there's nowhere that you can go that God isn't present. But uh, during the beginning of the second song, we're going to have offering and our ushers will come. Eric's not going to need to tell you to come because they're just going to come automatically at the beginning of the second song. I'm believing in them. And then, uh, but I'll be here and there's other men in the room, women in the room if you need to pray with them, okay? You'll stand and sing with us. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, kindness of a Savior.
Eric's going to pray for us in just a second for uh, the team that's going to uh, Mission Arlington. But before we do it, you know, I, I was reminded of something just now as, as I was down here praying. Uh, Butch Smith, who is like a, a spiritual father to me as well, he always used to tell me this. Eric, I know you've heard it too. He'd say, you're not as good as they say you are, and you're not as bad as, you say, as they say you are. But you are exactly what God says. Listen to him, okay? That's the message today. Eric, what do you got? Uh, if you're going to Mission Arlington, I'd like you to stand wherever you are. If you're in the room, you guys are going to Mission Arlington. All you youth and leaders, who are, who are you? All right. We got 14 going, I think, total, right? So they're apparently not all in here, but yeah. Let's just say a prayer over them as they go. Uh, they're leaving. Y'all are leaving tomorrow? Next week. Saturday. Okay, Saturday. So before we see you next. Okay, before next time. Yeah. All right. So let's pray over them. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for the opportunities to go and share you with other folks that may or may not know you, Lord. Lord, we think that uh, America is a Christian nation that um, 
that everybody knows you because they, they say they do. And so, uh, Lord, I, I know that's not true. But there's a lot of people in this, in this country that do not know you, do not know the first thing about who Jesus is. And so we ask that you would just uh, guide them, that your spirit would move in their lives, that uh, the ones that are, are sharing, the ones that are playing, the ones that are, are chaperoning or whatever they may be doing, God, I pray for them as they, as they go. I pray for the folks that, that they'll meet. I pray for the divine um, appointments that you've made. Uh, Lord, for all those people that they will uh, share the gospel with. Uh, Lord, that, that their lives will be changed, that they would come to you, that they would come back with testimonies telling them about um, who you are and uh, the, the, how good you are, because you are always good. Lord, we pray for the moms and dads here, uh, Lord, to, to continue to pray for their children and to let you have them. Um, Lord, we just ask your blessings on this trip. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. You're dismissed. <laughs> we can pray. Let's play, let's play the first song. Let's play the first song. Let's play the first song.